Welcome to my guide on the Voidcast Die Extreme. To unlock this, you must complete the normal fight in patch 6.4 story content, then go to Old Charlian. In the southeast is the Wandering Minstrel to unlock the duty. Let's keep the intro short, but please consider subscribing if you like my guide. In the description is a full, uncommentated run up to Enrage to see the order of mechanics. Before pulling the boss, there is some setup. We will mainly need two things, but if you like, have A, B, C, and D on the edges in cardinal directions, and put a 1 in the direct center of the arena. We also need clock spots, light parties, and within those light parties, you want to pair up melee players with tanks and ranged and mages with healers. For those of you who do not know what this means, I will go over it now. For those of you who do know, feel free to skip ahead to the fight's start. The first is clock spots, like hands on a clock, or you can consider these as cardinal directions. People tend to put down a numbered marker, with every player taking a different spot on the marker. Tanks will take north and south, healers east and west, and then DPS fill out the corners, the intercardinal positions. These will be true north instead of boss relative. That means north of the arena is always counted as north, and you'll spread based on that. Secondly is light parties, or two groups of one tank, one healer, and two DPS. This is for some stack mechanics that happen that always target the healers. This ensures four players are in each stack. Typically, north, northwest, west, and southwest clock spots end up becoming group one, or the west group. Group two is the east group, starting northeast and going clockwise to south. Pairing up is exactly what it says, pairs of players. There is a mechanic that requires two players to stack together to prevent death. Partnering like this makes things far easier. First, Golbez will use Terra Storm, sending two rocks to opposite corners. This can be either direction. Stand at the edge of his hitbox at either safe corner to dodge. At the same time, however, is Lingering Spark. This is a baited AoE. At the end of the cast bar, AoEs will be placed under every player. About three seconds later, they will explode. Simply stay stacked in the safe spot until the cast finishes, then move to the previously unsafe corners. This will lead immediately into Phases of the Blade. This is his frontal slash from normal, but with a follow-up. He will always face a random player, slash 180 degrees in front of him, the entire front of his hitbox, then 180 degrees behind him. Simply stand behind the arrows on his sides, then move in front after the first slash. He will combine this with other mechanics later. Binding Cold is his follow-up. This is a basic raid-wide AoE that leaves a 9 second dot, damage over time, effect on everyone. Be sure to just heal through it. When the dot wears off, he will use Gale Sphere. This works nearly the same as in normal. He will spawn four clones, one at each cardinal. These clones will shoot line AoE orbs. The order they spawn in is semi-random, but with a consistent pattern. It will spawn the north or south clone first, then the opposite clone, then east or west, with the opposite of that being the fourth. East and west will never be first. Make sure to remember the order and dodge the AoEs. During the second clone's AoE will be Arctic Assault. This will shoot icicles into two opposing directions, limiting the amount of space that is safe to dodge the orbs. Make sure to be behind one of the icicle sets, but also safe from the orbs coming from south or north. Dodge the final two sets of wind orbs immediately into another phases of the blade. Dodge behind, then in front. Gale Sphere always ends with a phases of the blade. Another binding cold marks the separation between sets of mechanics. Void Media is his first version of a tank buster. It will drop AoE meteors on each tank four times, then a larger, harder hitting AoE for a fifth hit. Simply avoid standing in them or stacking them. Your first reopener will occur during the first Ajdaya Shadow. This first one does nothing. It does, however, lead into his ultimate attack, Black Fang. This will do six hits total. A moderately damaging initial hit, four pulses of light damage, then a final heavy hit. Some mitigation will take care of this. From now until Unrage, Ajdaya's Shadow will augment the next phases of the blade cast he uses. It will now be called Phases of the Shadow. Which form of the buff he gets is determined by the Pattern of Darkness as he casts. If there is a lot of shadow covering the entire arena, you will additionally have to dodge a donut-shaped AoE where only the inside of his hitbox is safe, then spread out to your clock spots. 
If the darkness above is only covering around Golbez, you will have to dodge outward and stack in your light parties. This will do damage as Burning Shade for the spreads and Immolating Shade for the stacks. It hits hard, but can be taken safely without mitigation. If you are missing a player in the stacks, mitigation will be needed. And remember, the stacks are always targeting the healers. That's not all though. Ajdaya's shadow will augment the next phases of the shadow, but he can do mechanics between those two attacks. After every cast of Ajdaya's shadow, Golbez will do three tank busters. These are AoE lines in the direction of the main tank and places Flames of Eventide on any one hit. Three stacks of Flames of Eventide will deal heavy damage, essentially to kill the tank. To do this attack the right way, simply have the other tank use Provoke after the first or second AoE. Any form of a tank swap will save you. The full order of attacks for this first use of Ajdaya Shadow is Ajdaya Shadow signaling in or out. Three tank buster slices. Phases of the shadow front, back, then resolve Ajdaya Shadow. It could just be very weird RNG, but this also seemed to very much prefer to be in and spread more than out and stack. If this is similar for your group, Trust me, he can in fact do out and stack here. Quickly get to the center for healing and Golbez immediately launching into Double Meteor. This looks scary, but it's actually quite simple to execute. Everyone only has two or three possible things they must do, even though there seems to be a lot of markers and such. Broken down by mechanics, we have a circular tower that needs three players in a north corner, a tower needing two players on the opposite corner in the south, two flare markers, and a knockback from a specified player. You cannot mitigate this knockback, as shown by the purple coloring. Be sure to be stacked in the middle for the knockback. Healers are the most important and have the most options because of an extra mechanic. One healer will get the knockback indicator. All they must do is stand directly in the middle until it goes off. Then when it does, move slightly south. Ajdaya will have landed and will tether to you. She will then do a massive line AoE in your direction. Pointing it directly south will avoid killing others. The other two mechanics are towers and flare markers. These two are linked in that if you do not have a flare, you go to a tower. One DPS and one non-DPS, a tank or the other healer, will get the flare markers. To solve this, have all DPS go north and all supports go south. Have the three DPS without a flare get knocked to the tower in the north, and have the flare to the empty north corner, while the remaining two tanks and healers get knocked to the two-person tower, the healer or tank with a flare to the empty corner in the south. Done right, both flares should be in opposite corners. Make sure to stay in your corners until your individual mechanics go off. The flares seem to have a very heavy damage drop-off, so moving in even slightly can kill someone. Within a certain distance, the damage is just outright lethal. This mechanic hurts a lot between all the damage sources, so be sure to mitigate healthily. But beyond that, solving it is pretty static. DPS north, support south. Knockback center, then two steps south to bait the Ajdaya AoE. Heal up and prepare for the second Ajdaya Shadow cast. This will always be the opposite of the first one. If the first one was in and spread, the second will be out and stack. Like normal, this will lead into three tank buster slices, but then he will do other mechanics instead of phases of the blade. Head to your light party groups in the west and east as he jumps mid. Void Stardust will spawn two markers in opposite corners. Cascading AoE indicators will then go in either direction across the edge. Make a U-turn, then return in the middle rows or columns. The goal is to dodge into the outer area after the AoEs go off, to avoid the AoEs coming back down the middle. At the same time, small AoEs will appear on all DPS or all support. This is Abyssal Quasar. This is where your partners come in. Each AoE needs exactly two players in it or the target dies. After dodging the AoEs, stack with your partner. The tanks and melees can run into melee range together after the dodge, while the healers and range duck into the first AoE that goes off and stay there. If you get hit by any of the avoidable AoEs, you will be instantly killed by Abyssal Quasar. 
While the Hiele pairings can sit safely in the corner, they need to be ready to make a run for it immediately after, and get their HP topped off. Golbez immediately begins to cast one of two attacks, Eventide Triad or Eventide Fall. They are handled very differently. Eventide Triad is similar to mechanics seen before where the boss will target one random tank, one random healer, and one random DPS. There is no knowing who, so you merely stack the tanks north, stack the DPS south, and the healers can each sit east and west. This is not shared stack damage, we're stacking to ensure that nobody gets hit more than once. The healers can stay spread out for consistency and minimizing movement. Even Tied Fall is the line stacks from normal. These are pretty heavy hits, so make sure all four players from each light party are in it. Take these east and west, since the healers want to go to those spots at Even Tied Triad anyway. There is no way to know which one it is without just reading the cast bar name. However, it does seem that the Even Tide that happens later is the opposite of this one. Gobez will use Binding Cold for a raid wide, then Void Media Tank Buster. This leads finally into Phases of the Shadow. Remember what he telegraphed before Void Stardust, and dodge accordingly. While he can do different stuff before and after Phases of the Shadow, there won't be anything additional happening during it, so handle them all the same. After this second Phases of the Shadow, Terra Storm will be used for the second and final time. This one will be combined with Arctic Assault, but this one will have both set of spikes facing the same direction. This will make only one of the two Terra Storm safe spots viable. This is especially an issue as there are light party stacks going off, though this one is called Void Blizzard 3. To survive, both groups need to go to the same safe spot. However, just put one of the two groups in the back corner. Group 1 melee range, group 2 in the corner. As long as group 1 sits on the edge of the boss's hitbox, there is plenty of room, and if you are a confident group, Consider putting both melee DPS in Group 1 for specifically just this mechanic. Binding Cold will be used once again, so heal up after the stacks. And now the tutorial is over, Gorbez is sick of you. Gale Sphere will be cast, and all the same rules apply. North and South first, and Arctic Assault during the second orbs. But now there's another two issues to deal with during it. Have Group 1 head North, and Group 2 head South during the clone spawns. During the first and fourth sets of Gale Spheres will be mechanics. This will be Void Arrow 3, Partner Stacks, and Void Blizzard 4, the Light Party Stacks. This order is random as well, but will always be both. If Void Arrow 3 happens during the first set of orbs, you will need to do Light Party Stacks for Void Blizzard 3 during the final set of orbs. And the reverse is true. If Blizzard is first, Arrow will come at the end. During the fourth set of orbs, have Light Party 1 adjust west, with Light Party 2 to the east. So Group 1 will go north, then west, Group 2 go south, then east. But also don't forget about where the orb safe spots are, and deal with the Arctic Assault during the second set of orbs. This will likely be what trips your party up for the longest. This is an insane set of mechanics to deal with all at the same time. Some patterns can be really rude with the Arctic Assault. And then he goes and ends with Phases of the Blade. This one will not be augmented by Ajdaya Shadow, so just do the normal set of dodges. Heal up once the AoE stop for Binding Cold. Ajdaya Shadow will be used for the third time. Internalize if it is in or out, and do a tank swap. Void Stardust will come in and once again be combined with Abyssal Quasar, so be prepared to do partners. However, they will start near the middle of the arena instead of the corners. Head into the corners next to the Stardust spawn spot to dodge the AoEs as they go past. Then move into the middle to dodge as they make their return. During the Abyssal Quasar cast, Lingering Spark will be used. Treat this like you do at the beginning of the fight. Wait for the cast to finish, then dodge to the empty areas. However, you may want to dodge to your east-west light party spots for the second Eventide cast. This will be the opposite of the first Eventide. If Triad was first, this will be Fall. This was the final new mechanic of the fight, now just weather through his final assault. I hope you didn't forget what he cast for Ajdaya's Shadow, because here is Phases of the Shadow. Dodge as you need. This leads immediately into the second double media cast. This works exactly the same as you did the first time, no extra tricks.
Void Media Tank Busters will go off. Gale Sphere will go off for the final time. Like before, this will be the insane version with Void Arrow and Blizzard. The order of Arrow and Blizzard seems to be the opposite of last time, but your movements should be to start north and south, then move to west and east, regardless of which way the mechanics go off. Once again, he will end this with Phases of the Blade, into a Binding Cold. The fourth and final Ajdaya Shadow will be cast. This time he will do the Tank Busters, then immediately use whichever mechanic it is. Welcome to Enrage. He will cast Binding Cold twice in a row, Void Media Tank Busters, and then Enrage. You have a little bit of free time damaging the boss before Black Fang goes off. The final hit is the actual Enrage. The initial hit and four light pulses hurt exactly the same as near the start of the fight. This puts Enrage at about exactly 11 minutes. But that's the whole fight. You either kill him before Enrage or gotta clean up your mistakes. It's a very busy fight when he gets tired of you, but keep calm and you can get your clear. You will get two totems for every clear. The coffer will contain one random weapon, one weapon coffer, and a random chance to have a general crafting material, music crafting material, and a mount. Congrats on bringing about the Shadow's Fall. Thank you for watching my guide on the Voidcast Die Extreme. If you enjoyed this, be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. Please support me on Patreon or pick up some Wesk merch. I also stream on Twitch. Take care and may the power of Ananid Hogs lay waste to your enemies. And an extra special thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon. Extra special thanks to the big dragons who are Eamon Al Khatib, Benjamin Han, Benjamin Rice, Bergie, Karsten Wayward, Ethan W., Fraser97, Henny G, James Hall, Jason Grout, Jeremy Abbott, Jericho, Kevin Lowe, Mizella, Shimmering Blaze, T Rogue, Timmy, and Zero Two. Thanks again. See you around.